All right, what's going on, everybody? Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. So first, just welcome to everybody that that's on. I see that there's a good number of people on, so that's awesome. Um, so just a super quick intro of me and what all this is. So my name is Mike Zung. I am a certified financial planner here in the Kansas City area, um, and so I own a financial planning firm called Java Wealth. Um, and, uh, and, and a super quick background of me is that I used to also be in the tech world too, so which might kind of come into play a little bit with some of the stuff that we're talking about. Um, so I changed careers from, from tech into this, and so I kind of came from the, the software IT world. Um, so, so yeah, um, and then what this is, this is a live stream that I did for a while in the summer and the fall, and I'll be honest, I just completely fell off of it for a little while. Um, but but I do it every couple of weeks to just talk about you know different things that's around personal finance and more specifically for the IT community for the tech community um, and so and so yeah yeah that's a that's a super quick intro intro to me um, I really appreciate everybody being here um, and so what we are talking about today is the um, the fact that so there's big news where Cerner um, is they announced that they're getting bought by Oracle. And so this is just trying to help answer, you know, all sorts of different questions around what that means to certain employees. So, um, so yeah, we're going to be talking about some of the stock compensation uh, effects. Um, I, actually I actually wrote an article uh, and we released it last week, a blog article. Um, so we'll kind of, we'll dive into that a little bit more. Um, and then we'll also kind of touch on Oracle and look at benefits, um, comparing benefits between Cerner and Oracle um, and things like that. Um, and, then at, and then actually be taking a step back and talking more career kind of stuff too. Right? So just, just thinking, thinking a bigger picture of what this means to you as a Cerner employee from a career perspective. And with me to talk about this stuff is uh, a guy that... Um, I've I've known for a couple years, also here in the Kansas City area. Um, super solid guy that you know he has Cerner clients too, and so so you know he has he has some 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 knowledge of what's going on in that world. Um, and so, without further ado, I I introduce Donovan Brooks. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Mike. Uh, super excited again. Yeah, Donovan Brooks, certified financial planner. I have my own financial planning practice up here in St. Joe, so not too far away, but grew up in the Kansas City area. Uh, like Mike said, I have some Cerner clients um, for a while, and so kind of been connected um, in, in, in that way. Uh, you know, also graduating from Northwest Missouri State, Cerner pulls heavily, heavily from uh, that yeah. university for, for college graduates. So, yeah, super excited. Kind of I've always had a pulse on, on kind of what Cerner's been um, hap you know, what's been happening with Cerner and, and what's going on outside of like maybe the more granular stuff um, on the inside, but have had right. um, kind of the ear going on there. So um, but yeah, yeah, super excited to chat um, what this means. Um, and uh, potential is right. There's still a lot to be determined, um, a lot that can change, but uh, let, yeah, let's definitely talk about what we, what we know. Um, right. And maybe, yeah, some, some potentials. So super excited. Right, right. All right, very cool. Um, yeah, so so yeah, with with what we'll let's see here. For, first, first, let me go. Let me do the important stuff. Let me do this disclaimer. So so just to just to set the stage for everything that I you know I have to give this disclaimer that this everything in here is just general explanations and education. We're not doing any sort of specific tax, legal, or investment advice. And before considering acting on anything, that you need to first uh, consult with your own tax, legal, or investment advisor. Right, um, and so and and more more specifically for this with with everything with Cerner, so obviously neither one of us are Cerner employees, right? So we're not in we're not in the room where it's happening right now, right? As far as the the town halls and all hands and everything else like that. Um, so what so the information that we are presenting is just what we've gathered from publicly available information, right? And so before acting on any of this stuff, just understand that. That you know you have to you have to really um, you know run things by your your own HR and you know your own situation and like get the you know get get the real documentation for for a lot of this stuff right um, so so yeah and then also also just 
the reason why I like doing this live stream format, sweet, my dog's barking. Um, the, reason, the reason why I like doing the live stream format is um, to, to make this interactive. And so to invite people that if you have questions, then to yeah, go ahead and post them. Um, we'll, try to, you know, we'll try to address them live. So in case we're talking stuff and it's not making any sense, then you can ask more clarifying questions. Right. Um, okay. Cool. So, so usually what I do with this um, part of one of the sections is what I call the Reddit question of the week, right? And so I usually do that at the end. But uh, I, I figured that I would go ahead and, and share this share this at the at the beginning because it actually tees up um, what we're going to be what we're going to be talking about. Um, so, so just a little background. So there's on Reddit, usually I pull from the personal finance sub, right, to, to just get questions, right? But in preparation for this, I was like, oh, well, I'll go ahead and put this out there to the Cerner subreddit out there, right? And so, so I posted this thing that just says, hey, there's a live stream that we're doing, you know, this thing here. Um, and so, so I invite people to, to come in. And so I said, yeah, we'll be talking about the stock comp career and everything in between. And so, so I out myself as, hey, I'm the, I'm the guy that's doing it. So I know Reddit's usually a pretty anonymous thing. But um, so I said, you know, we're, and then also, yeah, we're no way sponsored by Cerner, um, not selling you anything. Um, and then, and so ask whatever questions, right? And so the, the, the beauty of the beauty of Reddit, the first, the first question, the first, the first comment is blah, 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 who cares, right? So that's, so then that's, I figured that's what we'll try to answer. So um, actually, DJ, maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it to you. So from, from your perspective, like who cares? Why should you care about any of this stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, uh, employees are probably on the spectrum from caring a lot to maybe not caring at all. And business as usual as what's been kind of put out there, just kind of keep working until things change. So uh, that's the beauty of it. Who does care? This is all very personal. It's, it's personal finance for a reason. Uh, we hope that there's some information here that could be valuable, some nuggets uh, that we cover, and maybe that helps you in your decision making, in your planning process, um, in your personal finances in general. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's hard to say who cares. We're kind of throwing a big net out there to try to help as many people as possible. That's kind of why we show up. We show up to provide as much value as we can to the right. residents of Kansas City. That's that's why we do this. Uh, there's no, you know, ulterior motive. There's just opportunity. We saw to to fill, step in and fill a gap and and help bounce ideas, to talk, um, to educate. And so so you know, if you're somewhere on that that spectrum, you might not care. And if that's fine, then you can, you know, you're probably not on this call. You know, this this live. Anyway, <laughs> right. But, uh, we're hoping to speak to the people that do care and that that maybe can get a little value out of this live. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And and to be honest, I mean, some some of the stuff that we'll talk about might not pertain. I mean, so there's what in Kansas City, there's 13, 14,000 Cerner employees, right? And so some of the stuff that we'll talk about may not may not pertain to you, right? So not everyone gets stock compensation. Not everyone has our issues. And so so some of that stuff is like, yeah, okay, this is only for a particular subset or whatever. But um, but but I do think that there's a lot of this stuff that it will just you know, it'll span, it'll, it'll be for everybody. Right. right. Um, so hopefully we will help you care a little bit about this. Right. So, for sure. um, so yeah. Um, so, so getting, go ahead and get into it. I'll, I'll, I'll do a real quick overview of kind of what's going on and what the whole situation is. But I figure most of the people that are watching this are, are more than aware of, of everything. Um, and so, so yeah, like I was saying, Cerner, Large employer, I think it's the second largest employer here in Kansas City. Um, yeah, 13, 14,000 employees here, 24,000 or so total. Um, and, and so it was announced just in December that, that they're getting bought out by Oracle um, in an all cash deal, right? Um, and, so, and so, yeah, from, from that perspective, the, the fact that it's an all cash deal, yeah, I guess. Um, there's there's two main things that were that are big for the announcement, right? Is that it's an all cash deal, and that it's expected to close in 2022, right? Um, and so with with that with the deal um, that that whenever the deal closes, that any Cerner stock is all going to get bought by, and it's all going to get bought at a at a 
announced price of $95 this year, right? Um, so, so I think that that segues us a little a little bit well into the into just into the stock compensation part of it. Um, so, like I said, I, I wrote an article that that talks through that, but um, we'll we'll go ahead and and touch on some of that stuff here too. Um, and again, feel if anybody's watching and you have any additional questions, then feel free to pop them in, and we'll uh, we'll try to get them answered. Um, so, so, so yeah, uh, Donovan, I figure that I, I can first kick this back to you as far as, okay, with the stock compensation, what does it mean to the, the various types, right? Um, so I can keep it open ended for you as far as how you want to tackle mm -hmm. it. So, right, right. So stock compensation, um, we're seeing more and more popular in, in, in compensation packages. And so our issues probably what, uh, if, if you're receiving, you know, any, any, um, stock compensation. This is probably um, what, what what's being included in your package. Um, and so, really, when we look at our issues, it's presented in terms of you know a grant. You are granted um, typically a specific amount of our issues that has a vesting schedule over time. Kind of the golden handcuffs to to keep you um, <laughs> you know locked in at Cerner. And so, you will have to re you know reference your specific grant. Um, know your vesting schedule. Know what's vested and what's invested to to really kind of. Um, apply to kind of what we're gonna what we're gonna talk about. So really, we'll be hitting on kind of the the R issues. Um, we'll talk about the ESPP, um, which is referred to the ASPP, the Associate right. <laughs> Stock Purchase Plan at Cerner, and then we'll hit on um, the options, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, that um, NSOs are the only um, options that are um, available and were offered to Cerner employees. Yeah, I was saying that that's that's the only one that I've seen. I don't, I, mm -hmm. I haven't heard of anybody having. Uh, incentive stock options, um, maybe and, the execs, and maybe a long time ago, you know, right? Something right. That has extended that may have expired right. by now, or yeah. So for yep. sure, for sure. So yeah, go ahead and uh, I'll bounce it back to you uh, okay. since you were the one that, that wrote it. On let's just talk about shares you own outright. So we yep. have um, either exercised options and, and received, you know, uh, the stock that we own, you know, in our in our brokerage account. We either um, have our issues that have vested. Um, and then I guess we could probably fold in um, matching contributions that were made in the form of Cerner stock, which um, was more of a, a thing of the past. They've kind of switched since then due to, due to some, some, you know, things that have gone on. But go ahead and hit on uh, right. what, what, what should we know about the stock that we have vested to us and what's going to happen and what we can expect and maybe any planning around that. Yeah, yep. Yeah, exactly. So, so just to clarify, as far as the, the stock, the, R, the vested RSUs, first, just I'll do a super quick uh, recap of, kind of the way that RSUs work, right? So with RSUs, they're granted to you. And then as soon as they vest, as, as soon as a, uh, yeah, the, the, as soon as some of those RSUs vest, then it's essentially like you are getting paid a bonus at that date of vesting. And that bonus is in the form of Cerner stock, right? Um, and so the analogy that I make is, imagine you just got a $10,000 cash bonus. They take out the taxes and all that stuff. And then you turn around and you buy Cerner stock with that cash, uh, you know, in the open market, right? And so, and so that's, I, that, that's a common confusion that, that I hear is like, well, what about my vested RSUs? Well, it's like that is just like, that's just stock that you own right now, right? The tax, you've already been taxed on it um, because it, get, it gets taxed as income whenever they vest. And so, so that's just stock that you own. It's, it's like, yeah, you got, your, you got your cash bonus and then you went on to Robinhood or Schwab or E-Trade or whatever and you bought Cerner stock, right? So, so that's essentially what that is. Mm -hmm. And so one thing too with the, the taxation is when we say kind of ordinary income or, or compensation income, it's it's you know you know you're you're paying federal and 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 state you know income on it. You're paying Social Security right. and Medicare, so it's kind of rounded out exactly like if you were to get paid wages, like like Mike said. So right. that that's often a, a misconception as well yeah. of like what is actually tax you know what's being taxed right. from this. Right. Yeah. And, and so, and, and that's, that explains why if, if, for example, you're, you had a hundred shares that vested, what they're doing is that you're granted a hundred or a hundred shares vest, they, they become yours, but then they hold back some of those shares to pay for the taxes, to pay the withholdings. Right. So then the, the amount that you actually get in your, 
in your brokerage account, right? In your Morgan Stanley account, I'm pretty sure is what they're using. Mm -hmm. um, is, you know, is maybe like 68 shares or something like that, right? right? And so what they're doing is that they, they sold off some of those shares to cover the tax withholdings and then you get the rest, right? Um, and so, in, and yeah, like we're saying, like that is stock that you now own, right? Um, and so, so yeah, so, so you said that. Um, we said, yeah, any, if, if, if someone had non-qualified stock options that they exercised but they held on to, um, which mm -hmm. I like very, very quick side is that you generally don't want to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I have a whole video that just talked about that. Yeah. Um, so, so the, so that's another scenario or yeah, if we want to go ahead and put in the stuff in your 401k, right. That's like that Cerner stock that you own. Right. And so, so yeah, as, as far as all of that stuff, then, then really what your, what your choices are is that you can, you can sell it. You know, there's no, not, as far as I know, there's no restrictions right now to where you can sell it right now, just at whatever the market price is now. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I, I looked earlier today, it's like 92 periods. bucks. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. It was, it was hovering. Yeah. Around that, yeah. that price. So, yep. Yeah. So no, yeah, no restrictions besides again, dealing with blackout periods, um, you know, right. around earnings calls. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing really. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and to be honest, I'm not sure how many people are held to the blackout periods if all employees necessarily are. Um, but, or if it's just, or if it's just kind of, if you're, uh, in that, in that insider. Role, right. 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 Um, so, so, but anyway, um, yeah, so those are, those are some of the options where, um, yeah, you can either just sell it now. Um, or if you, don't sell it right now then basically you're just you're waiting until the deal closes and then those shares will get bought at $95 mm -hmm. and because that what that price has been announced and that's like going through the regulatory process to be um, you know allowed there's probably not going to be and I say probably because it's not impossible it's not likely that we're gonna see Cerner stock bust through that $95 ceiling because right. we know what is going to be paid by right. by Oracle, and so that that's kind of artificially, I should you know, kind of keeping keeping it kind of below. So um, from that point of view, there's there's not a whole lot of incentive um, if we're out of the money per se um, to to sell now, unless you need the cash. And this goes back right. to what your personal circumstances, kind of what's going on in your life. Again, check with your financial advisor. Um, but if you have the time to wait it out. Um, and get that better price, um, you know, right. that that likely will make sense for a lot more people just because you know, there's not a real reason for that to that price to bust through. Right. Yeah. So but actually to make a little bit of a counterpoint, this is this is good why there's two people. Yeah, here, right? absolutely. So, absolutely. So an, an actual counterpoint could could be, um, well, I guess twofold. So one is if the deal falls through. There, you know, we're saying like there's, there's, it's right. very unlikely is from just what we hear, right? Is that it's unlikely, but if it does fall through, then that will obviously affect, affect the, the stock because, you know, there's not going to be that $95 uh, thing happening anymore. Right. Um, so it, so it just kind of goes back to the fluctuation. Um, so, so that's, that's one, that's one other consideration. And then another consideration is if, and I know you already said, like, if you need the money for something, then yeah, go ahead and you know, like sell it now for, right? Um, but, but if you're, if, if you feel that um, the, the gain, so, so how do I say it? If you, if you feel like you can take that money and, and have it used somewhere else, whether it's invested somewhere else or something and feel like mm -hmm. it, it would perform better than going right. from, you know, the current $92 to $95, mm, then, yeah. then that would be a, uh, yeah, absolutely. That'd be a, that'd be a tick in that, in that, in that side right, of the column. Right. Yeah. If you want to, yeah, get, get, um, yeah, granular about it. Yeah. We could look at opportunity costs. Exactly. And right. I think opportunity costs is something we should re revisit, um, you know, occasionally and in all aspects of life. So yeah, you're exactly right. If, if there's a, um, you know, if we, we hope, and we, we think that it could perform, you know, a little better, um, you know, to divest and reinvest somewhere else. And also in that, not saying this is, you know, this is definitely isn't advice, but typically when we divest and reinvest in something else, we get a little more diversification, right? We right. divest from the company. Uh, and then if we're investing in like an index fund, we're getting exposure to more companies um, and protecting some downside too. So there could be some, right. some advantageous benefits to, you know, that as well. So, 
good yep. good points no I, li- I like the the counterpoints i that's what i like about you know yeah having two heads talk is yeah right the, the right back and forth so um yep. okay good okay good, good. um yeah so i guess and and one last thing that i didn't remember or that i didn't mention is also yeah espp like or that aspp so any mm-hmm. any of the shares that that you that were bought at the end of an aspp purchase period those those also fall into this same world right um, and so, yeah, so, so it's like the, that stock that you own and right now they're in the middle of their last window of their last, mm-hmm. per, uh, uh, yeah, participation window and that'll close, um, I believe the end of March and then, and then that'll be, that'll be it. Then they, they won't right. have that until, until after the buyout happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Good, good, good. While we're already, while we're talking about kind of the, the, the shares that would have tax implications. I want to go ahead and pull forward one of the points we wanted to talk about. And just knowing that if this does does follow through, this comes to fruition, there will be some forced tax implication. Right. Um, oftentimes when we receive our equity comp or participate in the ESPP or ASPP, um, a lot of people get into the default of like buying and holding and buying holds not bad, but with right. that, you know, you're, you're um, punting and prolonging any tax implications down the road. This is going to be a forcing event for um, a lot of people that is going right. to trigger those tax implications. So know exactly what you have, um, know the, the holding periods and how long from, right. um, you know, vesting or purchasing if it's, it's the ASPP, um, because that's going to come into consideration when, um, you know, when you, when you figure out your tax situation for the year or even planning now, um, right. I'm not really big into planning about things that haven't happened yet. But some things that still make sense to your financial situation now could overlap with some benefits to a forced transaction like this that's going to trigger some tax implications um, and tax liability. So just be knowledgeable about that. Um, And like we said, if if that involves counsel and and bringing counsel into your situation, you know, it's probably worth it to to seek counsel. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. And and I guess maybe a little... For, for what we were talking about with the shares that you already own and then that they're going to get sold. So for that side, you're talking about capital gains, right? So yes, whether it's short term exactly or right. long term capital gains. But I guess right. this does actually segue well into the, the unvested stuff, right? Yeah. So what's going to happen with your, with your RSUs that haven't vested yet and with your, with your stu- if you have non-qualified stock options, if you have some of those and, and those haven't vested yet. So what's going to happen with those? Absolutely. That, that is a more seamless and smooth transition to this whole thing. So if you have unvested RSUs, um, and Mike, you'll have to correct me on the, the timeline on that document, they had mm-hmm. different grant types um, and, and different provisions to that. But uh, there seems to be a smoother transition that is just going to pick back up. You're going to retain the same vesting schedule. Um, it's going to be converted to Oracle RSUs. So there's going to be a, a, a parity on value. So it's going to remain the same. You might not receive the same amount of shares, but the calculation is going to be such that you receive the same value and your grant right. in transition. Right. So you'll, you'll, it should be, um, it should be neglect. Like it should be the very same um, in transition of what you have and just them honoring uh, what was, what was promised to you and granted to you uh, while you were at Cerner. Right. Yep. Yeah. And so, and so to that, so that that's for the, for the unvested RSUs that um, are going to convert. Yeah. That's how they'll convert. Um, but there, there were, and again, going off of, you know, public SEC documents that I said, I was just perusing around sec.gov and finding all this stuff. Um, so depending on your RSU grant, um, if, if, if you, if you pull that RSU grant, then they'll, some of them have, um, what are called change of control provisions. And so change of control is just a fancy way of saying like, Hey, if you get acquired like this, then it, then this kicks in, right? And so with with some some of the change of control provisions that I saw, um, I guess first the more straightforward one, um, it it actually said that they would accelerate the vesting. So like all of your unvested RSUs would vest, right? And so so that that is probably one of the more mm. dramatic versions, right? Right. From I mean it's. It's good because, you know, like I, I said in the article, it loosens those golden handcuffs kind of for you. Um, right. But then the bad side of that is it also accelerated how much income you've realized right. in this year and you kind of can't have nothing you can do about it. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, but but it's, it's the, yeah, it creates way more income 
for you in one particular year. So it might be bumping in the new tax brackets and right. disqualifying you for certain tax credits and things like that. More, more work and you got to get more creative if you want to try to offset, you know, some right. of that. Um, and there, there's some strategies to do that, but in the end, the tax code does limit us to, you know, maybe how much we can do in any, right. any one year for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, and then just to, just to round off the other, so, so there, there were also some where, um, the way that they would behave is that half of them would convert over like what you were just saying, where they would mm -hmm. just convert over to Oracle RSUs. And then the other half of them would accelerate, like they would vest whenever it happens. So like there's, there's one version where it's like, it all just accelerates and vests right away and you don't get any Oracle issues, but you get a bunch of, you get a bunch of income this year. Um, and then the other ones like kind of split half and half. And then the 50% that converts over stays on your same vesting schedule. Mm -hmm. So, um, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll breeze real quick through the stock options cause it was pretty similar for the unvested right. stock options where it's right. um, like they would convert to Oracle stock options. Um, and then there are some, like there's provisions in there where it says that 50% of them might immediately vest and, mm -hmm. and be cashed out for you essentially. So it's that same kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess anything else before we move on to kind of more the, the Oracle side of it with the benefits and everything, was there anything else that you were wanting to touch on um, around planning for the stock compensation or anything like that? Yeah, no, just knowing your options on, um, yeah, planning for a potential bump in income for, um, for this year, you know, if this comes to fruition. So, you know, we talked a little bit about capital gains. We talked about um, RSU vesting being pulled forward and being realized as compensation income. So knowing your options, right. um, if there's anything that we can shift uh, to pre-tax to pull our income down to, again to right. maybe make sure we stay in a, a lower tax bracket. Um, thankfully, we're kind of in a time where the government has been, um, you know, more generous in terms of income limits and um, tax credits and deductions, um, and so right. that can kind of come into play. But yeah, just know 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 your planning opportunities. Um, do a little research if you need to, or include some counsel uh, to kind of help shield. Right. And kind of optimize. We use optimize a lot your, your okay. tax um, scenario because, um, you know, there's likely some strategies that you can use to, to make that happen. So that's right. the only thing I would I would say. Um, and it's definitely very um, circumstantial. It's definitely on based on your personal finances and, you know, obviously a lot of factors <laughs> that we can't control. So that's why I say know your options uh, and right. be ready to pull the trigger um, or pull the trigger now if it makes sense with your other personal finances. And you can have some overlap in some of the tax benefits. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Cool. 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 Yeah. Let's transition to a little bit about Oracle. I think by now, most people know about Oracle. It's kind of funny because when I was growing up and I was in, um, in school, we had a stock market club and I remember asking <laughs> my dad companies, you know, to buy. And it was funny. It's like, you're looking to buy a great performing stock in the span of like a semester. So not <laughs> you're, you're hoping for a, a company that does really well in a short amount of time. But I remember mentioning Oracle um, back then. So I toggled <laughs> to the, the stock price and, you know, they, they pray, stayed pretty steady um, from like seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade to, you know, um, maybe even three or four years ago. So it's just really funny to kind of kind of flash back and be brought here. But for those that don't yeah. know, Oracle specializes in hardware and software. So they're provider across both of those areas, IT infrastructure. So, you know, pretty similar to, you know, what, what um, Cerner has known and cloud apps and, and, and platform, um, cloud platform. So uh, this just made sense for them to get into the health IT space. Um, right. This is, um, you know, I think they've been looking for some growth plays and acquisitions the last few years, which we've seen um, bump their, their stock price up. So they, they saw this as a way to expand and maybe grow um, a new arm, you know, of their business. And so they right. saw, Turner is a, a good target. So, um, yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about benefits in, um, between Oracle and, and Cerner. So uh, as I was going through, I'm always big into the benefits. And if you don't know what benefits you have available to you or what you're paying for at Cerner, um, or as you transition, know what these are. These are included and, and available in part yeah. of your comp package and can um, amount to a significant amount of value or lost value. Uh, in, in the term of your life and your personal finances. So uh, do your due diligence, know what's offered to you. And then, you know, if we're looking at a, a, a transaction that's going to come to fruition, you're going to be propelled into a, a special enrollment period where you'll have to sign up for uh, new benefits, you know, through, through Oracle. So know 
what's available to you. But we were skimming through the benefits and kind of comparing again, based on historical information that's on the internet, uh, <laughs> maybe a little outdated by now. And who knows what changes um, can happen if, if this comes to fruition and if there's any expansion of benefits or, or what will happen. So what we saw is pretty similar, pretty similar packages between the two um, across the, the major benefits. Um, health insurance, didn't really get to see the details there. Um, and maybe Mike found a, a document that, that I couldn't get, but they're, they more than <laughs> likely have a, a PPO. Um, well, I know they, they likely have a PPO because um, the FSA is offered, but they have a um, HSA available, which means they have a high right. deductible health plan. So they have a couple options um, you know, that you can choose uh, depending on your healthcare needs. And I know this has kind of been a sore subject for a lot of people at Cerner, um, the healthcare plans and um, them not providing the, the needs um, for the needs, you know, of the employees. So um, this could be something that that steps in and fills the gap um, and maybe is a, a good benefit that uh, can get you back on track and, and give you some more protection and coverage. But again, you'll want to know the exact coverage details of that. So again, HSA and FSA offer great um, tax deductions, pre-tax uh, contributions to go in there to, to help offset those costs um, can be used in tandem with those. So Dental and vision, probably pretty similar. Most dental and vision benefits are pretty much the same across most employers. Right, right. Um, yeah. So they do have a, offer also a dependent care FSA. So for those that are caregivers and have dependents, another great benefit to have to defer and come and avoid what we're doing when we when we uh, 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 contribute to FSAs or HSAs. We're avoiding um, we're we're avoiding income tax when we right. defer in here, and we're avoiding Social Security and Medicare taxes as well. That's what makes them so attractive. Um, but keep in mind, FSAs are pretty use it or lose it. So um, outside of these right. last couple of years with the pandemic, so we want to try to match those contributions, what we know our expenses are going to be when it comes to um, healthcare, if we use an um, healthcare FSA or dependent care. So yep. awesome, awesome. 401k, um, obviously a big, you know, big benefit for a lot of us just planning for retirement. Um, Cerner currently matching 50% on the first 6%. And then an optional 2% based on performance. Oracle is doing about the same. 50% 50, 50 of the first 6% capped at 5,100. Um, and that's vesting over four years. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's what that looks like. So it looks like they have a cap at, at, at that 5,100, which I don't yeah. think uh, Turner has a hard dollar cap. It's just capped on um, the right. percentage of income. Is that, is that kind of what you came across? Mike? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I, that's what I was gathering. Um, and so in, in doing the quick math, this, this affects the people that like, basically if you're making over, if your base salary is over 170, that it's gotcha. like that, that's kind of where it hits that cap of that, that 5,100 of, Hey, like, Hey, I'm putting in 6% and gotcha. it's going to match. But then once it hits that amount, then, then that's whenever awesome. it, it gets capped. So God, awesome. I'm glad you did the math. That's very insightful. Yeah. That, that can, can be kind of scary to know there's a cap, uh, a, right. a dollar cap, but knowing the, the salary cap on that, um, right. yeah, puts it in perspective. So yeah, thanks for doing the math on that. Yep. Um, uh, one thing that I got kind of excited about, and I'm sure Mike got a little excited about right yeah. now is the deferral types on the two different planes. So right now Cerner only offers pre-tax and after-tax. So traditional or Roth, mm -hmm. but Oracle has the third and the unicorn of deferral types, <laughs> which is the non-Roth after-tax type. And so what this allows for, if you make the maximum contribution, uh, right this year, it's 20,500. Um, historically, that's where you're capped um, and you can't contribute anymore. But 401k plans that have a non-Roth or a non-Roth after-tax deferral type have um, a higher ceiling to, to funnel contributions. And so you can contrib tr continue contributing um, to your 401k, but then convert that non-Roth after-tax money to your Roth 401k. And this is known as the mega backdoor Roth. So for those that are, excuse me, interested in um, saving more than the annual limit in the 401k, this can be a great opportunity to, to sock away more money. So stepping back, I'll give right. the disclosure that the Build Back Better plan, that the tax bill that's kind of been volleyed back and forth between the House and the Senate, this is something that is on their chopping block. And um, it's something that hasn't really been debated. So both you know, both um, House and Senate really agree this needs to go away. Um, so we don't know how long this is going to be available. This could be gone right. um, by the time that right. the final transaction comes to, to fruition. But still, it's good to know that that is available. Um, and who knows, you might be able to um, utilize that that strategy in the future. But again, we will see. But keep in mind, all contingent on tax um, tax planning. So, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, ESPP, they do offer an ESPP um, at Oracle. You can contribute up to 10% of your income. And I believe, Mike, you, f- you tracked down that there is a 5% discount. Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah. So going off of, and actually I can, I can add this link to, um, yeah. to, to, the, to the YouTube stuff. Um, that there, there's a there's a site. It's it's really nice as far as it's basically crowdsourcing benefit information from a bunch of different companies. So which might segue a little bit into the career side. But um, so so within there, you can see the different benefits from different companies. Um, and and it's it's especially for the bigger companies, it's pretty accurate. Right, nice. and so so it's a and, better and, glass door. It's what you're saying. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's, it's an actual glass door that you can see through. Um, right. <laughs> so yeah, with within there, it's talking about the ESPP that you can yeah you know you can contribute up to ten percent of your income and it's a five percent discount. Right. Um, gotcha. I actually don't know about the look back if if they have the look back provision as well too. Um, I gotcha. would somewhat assume that that you would, but I, I also haven't seen 5% discounts very often. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you so. that in your experience because, you know, you've, you've probably dealt more with these PP plans. I feel like I feel like 15% is the norm. That's the max, right? Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a discount as low as 5%. So we know yeah. that makes it a little less attractive um, over the short term, but still could be attractive for long term plays and in investing in, in the company. Right. But yeah, I was kind of shocked when, when you said 5%. Yeah. Um, I've never seen that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. F- 15 is is you is what I see the most, right? Although, but I will say that actually it was the last company that I worked at um, before before leaving and, and uh, before leaving the corporate world. Um, they had an ESPP plan, but there was no discount whatsoever. So it no was like, discount. So it is. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> right. <laughs> We want to give you the ability to invest in the company, right. but we don't right. want you to incentivize it was, that extra risk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had to read it a couple times, but that's, interesting, that's, what, that's interesting. what it was. So, sure. cool, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I guess so, yeah, if we want to, if we want to keep keep going through some of the other benefit yeah. stuff. Yeah. So uh, insurance a little bit. Group life is uh, provided by Oracle two times your base. So Cerner only does one times your base, so you get a little bump um, in additional. Um, insurance. So when I say base, base salary, they typically right. all group insurance is offered as a multiple. So that's nice. Um, I always recommend, and I recommend, I probably shouldn't do that. It's, it's encouraged <laughs> to reevaluate your insurance needs on an ongoing basis, especially for um, if you have dependents. Um, and so this may not be enough for you. So just know what your needs are, what you need to provide right. um, if you die prematurely. Uh, then they have group disability benefits. Um, Long and short, wasn't clear on what I saw. Maybe you saw something different on your site about if this was employer paid or um, if this was something that had to be elected um, by the employee. But we most most of the time with bigger companies, we see employer paid. Um, right. I don't know if that was something that you saw. So, um, okay. And then, yeah, just a couple other kind of similar benefits. Legal, they have off, offer legal um, benefit, legal plan benefit, commuter benefits. Um you know, a nice one's the the adoption benefit that they have ten thousand as opposed to Cerner's five thousand, and then yeah, they have some tuition reimbursement. So a couple other um, nice little satellite benefits for um, more situational stuff. So very cool. Right. Yep. Yep. Anything else yep. that you that you saw that that stood out that that um, you know maybe Oracle offered that it's like oh this would be nice to to talk yeah. about or have. Yeah, I mean the the one thing that I did see um, again on, from this from this crowdsourcing site that I that I was looking at um, is that they match donations. I'll, I'll be honest, I, I I'm not oh. positive if Cerner has that, but I know a lot of the big tech companies do this. Um, but with Oracle, they do they do a hundred percent donation match up to a thousand dollars. So for for those out there that are charitably charitably inclined, um, then definitely look at taking advantage of that benefit because then you can, you can double the amount that is going to your, to the, to your charity of choice. Absolutely. No, that's great. That's great. Glad you hit on that. And I, yeah, I'm not sure off the top of my head and I don't have the Cerner enrollment guide up, but I'm not sure if they do that, but that, yeah, that's definitely something to know for their, those that are yeah charitably minded. So, right. Right. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. Um, cool let's cool. see. I think, yeah, I think from a benefit perspective, I think that pretty much covers everything that I was that I was seeing too. 
I guess what I, so I was actually talking with somebody um, what, what back to the medical part yeah it's like I know Cerner has that bind like like they have this other this other kind of medical plan that they call bind and so that, so mm -hmm. that would be one where it's like I, I don't believe that Oracle on their side that they have anything similar right. to that so right right um, absolutely oh and then yeah just while we're talking about just health insurance I was thinking about this as I just saw a lot of maybe disgruntled employees or some that were upset with the health insurance plan, just knowing, knowing that transition, a new health insurance plan, just kind of know what's uh, in network and what's out of network and right. the private providers will, will likely uh, the network will change um, more than likely. Uh, so just knowing, cause that is a huge factor on, on the cost of um, you know, care, you know, for medical right. expenses over the course of the year. And um, hopefully you can retain your same providers and that doesn't disrupt that, but right. um, it might get disrupted and where you have to, to seek other providers to make sure you're in network to, you know, have a, a lower cost when it comes to, to um, out of pocket expenses. Yep. Yep. Cool, All right. Cool. cool. Awesome. So, so yeah, so now I guess with, so we, we've talked about, okay, what happened, what's going on with all of your current stuff, your current income, your, your current stock compensation, what does it look like on the, on, I should say, I don't know if I should say the other side, it sounds weird. Right. <laughs> um, but what, what it looks like at Oracle from a, like a benefit perspective. And then, so, so now that, now that you know that, like the natural thing of what you do during this time is you kind of step back and you mm -hmm. kind of reevaluate, you know, <laughs> larger picture things, right? Career perspective and things like that, right? right. So, um, so yeah. For, first, uh, I'll yeah, I'll kick it off to you as far as like so. So from that perspective, what are the things to like? Like, where do you start? Yeah, absolutely. So again, this is another forcing event, right? To to at least pull us back into contemplation. So again, we can't make any huge life decisions on what is still unknown and that hasn't right. happened yet, but we can start evaluating scenarios, um, the different scenarios that we know can happen and start to formulate like steps and things that we would be willing to do, what we wouldn't be willing to do if certain scenarios mm -hmm. uh, came to fruition. So I would encourage you, um, you know, to, to start planning about what could happen uh, what if a deal falls through and it doesn't happen? You know, are you still going to be on the same trajectory with with Cerner? Um, you know, based on everything, I know what I've what I've kind of seen and read um, is there's been a lot of happy clients lately at Cerner. There's been a lot of unhappy, not, mm -hmm. um, I shouldn't say clients, employees. A lot of unhappy employees at Cerner and everyone across the spectrum. So just right. reevaluating kind of um, kind of how fulfilled you know you are you know, with that and all the options there, obviously a deal could go through, obviously a deal could go through and there could be reorganization down, down the line. I think that's something that a lot of people are, are, are wondering, you know, if that's kind of hidden, you know, or, um, if that's planned, but not announced. Um, right. so really just kind of going through the different scenarios, what you're willing to do, what is your plan? If, if, um, scenario a happens or scenario B or scenario C, because although we might know know which exact scenario will happen, we can start planning and, and not be caught as off guard, um, if at right. all. And the more that you have um, organized and prepared in advance, the more you can just be ready to hit the ground running no matter what happens. Um, and so a great time for reflection, a great time to, to refresh what needs to be refreshed. <laughs> um, if that's a resume, if that's relationships, networking, um, you know, what have you to, to again, be active, um, and visible, um, in that sense. So that's kind of what I would say. Um, I'm just, I was kind of thinking about this as if I was a, a Cerner employee and that's, that's what I would do. But again, we're planners. We like to right. plan different scenarios and have, <laughs> um, things in place and action items and things of that sort. And maybe you're not concerned at all. And maybe your plan is to stay on with Cerner through thick and thin until the, the season runs dry. Um, and that's, that's completely fine. So there, mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely thinking through, you know, all of those things, but it doesn't hurt to, to, you know, start to think about that. Um, and, and it could be a great time to transition into something, the next, the next act, the next season of your career. Why can I talk right. a lot about that? And that segues us to, I think something that was really fun, uh, and really cool to talk about as we were preparing for this, um, was, you know, I, I learned just recently that Mike uh, has a lot of similarities through kind of what's going on 
with Cerner from the companies that he's worked for to some of the events that they've they've gone through. So I'm going to turn it back to Mike. <laughs> he's going to share a little experience of uh, of kind of his experience getting into the corporate world after college and um, his transition through the corporate world through some of these events that, you know, some of us kind of know all too well. So, yep. All right. Yeah. Turn in the tables. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and I guess maybe first I'll caveat this was, uh, you know, this is, this is going to be one person's experience, right? right? So everyone, and with what you were saying with, you know, some people are super, super up and some people are super down at Cerner about different things. But whenever you have a company of 13, 14,000 people, you're going to have, they're going to run the gamut. Right. right. Um, so, so, but yeah, whenever I, whenever I heard this, then it did, then a lot of different things did kind of flood back for me. So, um, just so going back for me from the beginning. So right after, cause a lot of people at Cerner are like their college grads and they go straight to Cerner as their first company. You know, they like what you were saying, you know, they recruit a lot from Northwest Missouri um, and, and other colleges. Right. And so for me, like it was a similar thing where I was in St. Louis and I worked for Boeing and which is, which is a very similar kind of thing where, you know, it's a big company. It's kind of a staple of the city and it's where a lot of people first get started, right? And so, you know, there, I definitely had my initial loyalties toward like, you know, I'm gung ho. Like, I this, this is a great company. It's my first job. I'm super excited, and and you know, lo I love working there, right? Um, one thing that, uh, so so I guess without going droning on too long, I was there for a, for almost five years, right? Um, and so. And so from, from that perspective, whenever I decided to, whenever I decided to leave there, there was definitely some feelings of like, it was scary for sure, because mm -hmm. like, this is the one company that I know and I feel comfortable here and right. I don't know what the rest of the world looks like. Right. Right. Um, for me leaving, um, it was, it was definitely a, uh, like, I just felt like I had like, it had run the course there. Um, I didn't. And, and I, by no means am I projecting this on the Cerner employees, but like from, uh, just from, from my own personal perspective, I was like, I don't think Boeing is the place for me, right. As far as kind of what we're doing. Um, and so, and so I guess I'm, I'm more of a pacifist and they're, and they're big on the, like the military defense side. So I was like, ah, right. I don't know if I, <laughs> I jive with this. Um, so so yeah, then, so, so leaving there was, it was, it was difficult because I did meet a lot of really good people. Right. And, and, you know, there's, there's a few people that I still keep in touch with, and this is what 20 something years ago now. Right. Um, but, and so, so that, so that was kind of tough, but it was just going to the next place. Um, that, yeah, that it was, it was just like, it was time to, to do something different. Right. Um, fast forward a little bit to more of the experience here. Um, like in Kansas City. So whenever I moved to Kansas City in 2006, um, I worked for a, a, an employee benefits company called Assurance. Um, so they're not obviously not as big as Cerner, but it's a it's a fairly large company there. Um, and and so I was there for for a long time. And while I worked there for a long time, we um, we we ended up getting there was news that we are getting acquired by another company um this other company called sun life financial um and so 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 you know this the cerner oracle thing like it definitely brought back a lot of that where it's just like oh man like what's going to happen to our entire company you know are they going to mm -hmm. come in and are they going to completely change everything and you know dissolve all these departments and you know we're all going to have to move to boston is where they were they were based out of right um so, so from that perspective, there was a lot of like, oh, you know, just a lot of anxiety that kind of came up with it. Right. And so, and so with, with that, um, you know, I, I'm trying not to drone on the entire time, but basically like, for, like going through that process was kind of difficult, you know, and of course the, the messaging was like, it's all business as usual, business as usual. Right. Um, but then, but we kind of knew in the back of our minds that it's like, okay, well, you know, it's not, it's obviously not going to be exactly the same, but I feel like some parallels between this and uh, like what I went through in the Oracle stuff is that it's, they're acquiring somebody that's in a new space. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to just like, 
scrap it because the, re the reason why they're buying it is because of the space that Cerner already occupies, right? Right. So I think from that perspective, that should hopefully temper a little bit of that, the, the, mm -hmm. the real doomsday kind of fears, right? Right. Um, as far as the like working with change perspective, um, you know, with, with any job, and this is not a Cerner specific thing or anything that it's just like, as people, as people progress in their careers, you know, people move your, your, your role changes, the people that you work with change. And it's very easy. And it's just, it's actually a human psychology thing to look back on certain points in time as like, you look more fondly on those times, right? The, the, the further away that you get from it, that it's just like, oh, mm -hmm. those were kind of the good old days, right? Right. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm sensing that there might be some of that too, of just like, oh, you know, like I remember when Cerner was this, right? And then there were the good old days and now it's something different and I have to move on. And the change, you know, going through that change is very, like, it's very difficult and, and, it sounds like it's overstating it, but in my eyes, it's almost a sense of mourning that you go through, like a grieving process that you go through of whenever, you know, because I mean, I still specifically remember the, at, at Assurant, there were times where it's like, it's me, I have all these super good friends and we're doing all these fun things and remember whenever we used to do this. And then you, and then whenever, you know, a couple of them leave and you're, so then you're kind of mourning this, like this time that was. Right. So, um, don't really have any answers around any of that stuff. It's more just, it's more just like, know that that's for, 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 for me, that that's, that was the process. Right. Right. Um, and so, so just to kind of round it out a little bit, you know, I, I was there, I was with Sun Life for, for a decent while. And, you know, honestly, it's like once they came in and, you know, we're talking like, there's of course, like, there's always going to be like some, like good and bad to everything but it wasn't like just all like oh this this new company's terrible right or right. anything like that you know there's there's good and bad there's opportunities um there's new opportunities that arise so um and you know i i still know people that are still there right now and they love it right like that they're they're perfectly happy with the new with the new company right um and so and so then and the last thing that i would say from from my perspective that I think could uh, I don't know, apply here is the next job that I actually went to was one where um, you know I wasn't I wasn't actively looking for a job but it was it was someone who I used to work with at Assurant that had reached out to say hey you know we're doing this thing would you like to be a part of this right um, and so so it was an opportunity that arose from relationships from before mm. right so it kind of gets to that that part of just staying in touch with people be not burning any bridges like mm. that basically if you do well and you treat people well then good things will you know that then it's part i guess it's a faith thing as much as anything but it's like that that things things will work out right um I know that might not be the most comforting thing for some people whenever they're just like, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do for my job. Um, right. But, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's a decent amount of my uh, personal experience of kind of walking through the like different corporate jobs and right. some of the different experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and then actually the last thing that uh, I've learned over and over again is that Sometimes you can have a feeling of, and maybe this is my own egocentricity of, hey, I'm in this job. I have an important role in this job. If I leave, then like what's going to happen, right? Like that, who's going to take my place and be right. able to fill this void, right? But right. I mean, even as I say it, it just sounds totally self-centered. Um, right. But, but even, I think even times that can be used against employees to kind of guilt mm -hmm trip them to yeah to yeah. into staying or staying longer than they they want to so right i think whether it's kind of ego or self-sabotaging or it's leveraged by another party like right yeah i think that can definitely come into play yeah yeah so i mean I, and all all that to say is that there while it's it's good to believe in 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 the the, the team that you're on the company that you're working for and all that stuff but 
do know in the back of your mind that like you are not the one cog that is holding the entire ship together right mm -hmm. and so and as again as egocentric as it might sound like there is a, there is a point there there is a level of you have to look out for yourself um, mm -hmm. right and and but but understanding the the pros and cons of that because it could be you know again and and it's not like all about money where it's like hey you just got to move jobs and you got to get as much money as you as you can get you know like it's 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 not that attitude it's more just it's it's just being honest with yourself of right. like am i happy here am i do i feel valued highly you know and compensated well enough do i like the people that i'm working with cuz people is definitely the biggest thing you know for right. for me I mean, looking back at, you know, since now I'm doing this solo business that that the, the, the camaraderie and the other people are is, is by far the thing that I miss the most. Right. Right. From that perspective. And so um, so it's 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 just being honest with yourself of the situation and what you. Yeah, it's like what 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 you value in is this ticking the boxes for for you. Absolutely. No, that's all super helpful. Thanks for for sharing a lot of, a lot of great wisdom and insight in there, um, for sure. And a lot of the stuff, yeah, we've, we've talked about. So, um, I would, yeah, I would just say in kind of some closing, closing thoughts. And then you, if you have any other closing mm -hmm. thoughts, Mike, we can kind of top, topple these on, but, uh, yeah, just make sure you're taking care of yourself in this time. It's been a, right. a hard last few years with the pandemic and to now <laughs> go through kind of this life event, um, potential life event. Um, and I, you know, who knows the anxiety and, the, the, the fear and some of the debilitating stuff that, that some of y'all are going through. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, you know, whether that is just being more transparent with the people that care about you or, you know, counseling or what have you, everyone, everyone does yeah. that a little differently. Just, you know, take, take care of yourself because, um, you know, th this, this acquisition isn't worth, um, you know, how low that it can potentially bring people. So right. take care of stuff. And then like, like Mike said, uh, you owe yourself, the utmost loyalty above, above a company and a corporation. And that's just not, you know, that's not to say like we can't care about and, and buy into culture and vision of a company. Um, but it comes down to it. Um, you got to care for yourself. You got to care for your family. Um, you know, you know, the, the company's not going to care for you. Like you're going to care for you. So you have responsibilities. Right. Um, you have your health, uh, emotional, um, physical, uh, mental to, to care about as well. So that's one thing I think oftentimes we can, the care, the, the charisma of companies um, can, can change uh, our thoughts around that and, and can almost take advantage. Not saying that Cerner's doing that. This, I would say this right. to anyone kind of in a corporate setting is that right. you owe yourself the utmost um, loyalty and to make sure that your needs um, and kind of your wants are, are, are taken care of. And if that's not the case, um, you know, it is a job. It's, it's a uh, employees market right now. There are tons of employers mm. looking to fill positions. And so there's a lot of leverage out there for those that um, are looking exactly what Mike said, a place where relationally it is, it is, um, you know, a great place to be. It's not toxic. You're getting paid what you're, uh, what you're worth and you feel good about that. Um, and just that you're able to be the, you know, the best version of yourself. So that's kind of right. yeah, what I would say around that. So anything else to yeah. last, last thoughts, Mike? Um, not, not really just, I, I guess we, uh, we, we definitely, did I mention that this is in no way sponsored by Cerner? So <laughs> <laughs> no way, no way. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think we, I think we, uh, we, we hit that one. Um, yes. no, no, I think, I think, I think that's, that's good. Um, I di didn't see any, any questions roll in, so that's, that's totally cool too. Um, but yeah, hopefully for everybody that whether you're watching it live or people that are going to watch this later, hopefully this was helpful, both from a hard dollar perspective, you know, the stuff towards the beginning, and then also just from kind of the, the larger, you know, like career perspective and everything that, that this, that this has been helpful, right? Um, cool. So, so yeah, Donovan, I totally appreciate you coming on. Yeah. It's pretty short notice. I, I asked you like three <laughs> days ago. Um, no, thanks for having me. It was, uh, I, I loved being here. So thanks yeah. for asking. Yep. Yeah. So, so I guess just, just real quick, um, um, for, for anybody here, like where, like if, if people want to learn more about you, what then where should they go and, and find you? Yeah. Yeah. So you can just hop over to my, my firm's website. That'd probably be the easiest, uh, um, storyline fp.com exactly how it sounds um or you can just search storyline financial and it'll it'll you know come up on on google so uh, but yeah that's how you can reach me 
All right, cool. Well, yeah, I again, I appreciate it. And for everybody else, I appreciate it. I'll, we'll be back. I'll be back in uh, just a couple weeks. Um, and we'll see you soon. All right, see you.